how can like an African American person evolve from a white person? We're different skin. Man, that's a fantastic question. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the evolution of human skin color. Let's talk about why there are different populations of humans with different colors of skin all around the globe. Let's take a look at a map and try to plot out the distribution of human skin colors around the world. Oh, look, isn't that interesting? The darkest colors tend to aggregate around the equator. There are a few exceptions, but maybe we'll figure out why later. Do you think that it makes sense to say that the darkest skin people all just gathered together at the equator one day and stayed there? No, that really doesn't make any sense, does it? So maybe, maybe there's something else that we could point to. Let's take a look at this other map of ultraviolet light saturation, right? How much UV light is hitting the surface of the globe at any given moment? Hmm. Now, doesn't that look familiar? If we overlap these maps, they're almost the exact same map. Maybe UV light has something to do with this. Hey, really quick, does anybody here have any siblings or parents or cousins or aunts or somebody who, who may have been pregnant recently? Did you take a look at the prenatal vitamins that they have to take? Maybe you saw a chemical in there called folate or folic acid or vitamin B9. These are all the same things, right? What do you think that's all about? What do you think folate's for? Let's take a look at these pictures here. These are kids with spina bifida, right? Spina bifida is a spinal deformity. And these are things that can happen when you don't have enough folate during pregnancy. That's why it's really important to take this folic acid because it can avoid situations like this. Well, why is that important? Well, if we look at it, it turns out that ultraviolet light can penetrate the skin and destroy folate. Interesting, right? So do you think that maybe these early human populations just rocked around wearing sunscreen all the time? No, that doesn't really work, right? Where are they gonna go, Walmart 2000 years ago? No, that makes no sense. But hey, it turns out that melanin, the chemical that makes your skin dark, actually blocks out ultraviolet light. So these populations living here where there's the most UV light have really dark skin loaded with melanin to protect their babies. Wow, isn't that interesting? What else does ultraviolet light do? It gives you a sunburn, right? Hey, are there any black kids in the class? How hard is it for you to get a sunburn? Let's celebrate how interesting that is, right? How cool your skin, wow, what a radical thing that you've got going on there. Hey, but what about me, right? Our ancestors went way up north or way down south, right? There isn't a lot of UV light. So why did our skin get light? Well, remember, UV light also causes photochemical reactions in your skin. It interacts with certain chemicals to produce really important stuff that you need, like vitamin D. Vitamin D is produced when sunlight, ultraviolet light, interacts with certain kinds of cholesterol in your skin. And this vitamin D is a really important hormone for things like mood stabilization, it makes you feel happy, and also bone development. Take a look at these pictures of people with rickets. See that? You don't get enough vitamin D and your bones get really rubbery and they feel really problematic because you're not gonna be able to walk properly with this. So we got lighter skin so we could have stronger bones. Doesn't that make a lot of sense? Hey, let's talk about Cheddar Man. Cheddar Man was a homo sapiens who lived in England around 10,000 years ago and we can actually do tests on his ancient DNA and we found out this guy had dark skin and blue eyes. Isn't that wild? Would you expect to see that today? Why not? Well, maybe it's that these different racial characteristics that we talk about actually all have an evolutionary history and they actually vary independently of another. Just like with you know height and hair color and eye color all vary independently of one another, it turns out all these things like skin color and nose shape and eye shape and lip shape and all the other things that you use to identify races actually all vary this way. And what's best is we find that they're on a sliding scale. They do, there's just totally arbitrary lines where we try to draw between racial characteristics, completely arbitrary. Hey, did you know that biologically speaking, race isn't a real thing? There are no subcategories of humans for different kinds of races, that's not real. It turns out race is a completely social construct. Let's talk for a minute about the history of racial ideologies and like where this idea of races came from. Let's talk about the times that biologists did try to separate people into different races and different subspecies and categories and how it just really never worked and it always had really problematic outcomes. Let's talk about all of that. Hey, do you see what I mean? Do you get where I'm coming from here? There are hours of deeply motivating and inspiring 
inspiring science lessons, mountains of information waiting to be uncovered in that one question that that kid just asked. We talked a minute ago about trash ideas. Racism is one of them. And guess what? Racism is founded on the belief that races exist. And biologically, they don't. Don't you think that would be a vital lesson for these kids? They're living in Tennessee. There are dozens and dozens of Confederate statues and monuments still up all around Tennessee. These are statues and plinths and plaques dedicated to the racist, traitorous, terrorist losers who wanted to keep humans as farming equipment so bad that they left the country, murdered American soldiers, and then lost the war that they themselves started. These kids are saturated in racist ideologies and rhetoric in their communities, maybe at home, maybe even at school. Don't you think that learning about the beautiful diversity of human populations and how these different racial characteristics are actually extraordinary adaptations that should be celebrated and how we have so much more in common than we do apart because we are figuratively and literally all one family. Don't you think that that would make their lives so much better? And here we are just not talking about any of it because you know, we want to give creationism a fair shake.